You haven't heard it? You mean to tell me that you haven't heard it? No, I haven't heard it. Here, play it. It's really terrific, Susie, when you hear it. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Yoanti. Welcome to the Yoanti Podcast. I'm going to start doing podcasts every Monday on this channel. I'm going to make this channel basically my podcast channel where I can just talk about mainly like social media events, things that are going on, whether it's like the NBA Finals, the Masters, um, you know, uh, Grammys, you know, whatever is kind of happening in social media. Uh, there's certain little things I want to talk about. Um, I want to mainly talk about the Jordan uh, cry face meme t today, but essentially that's what my podcast is going to be, just whatever kind of is going on in the world. Um, if it is like, you know, mainly entertainment or funny, you know, I might try to do one every Monday. I'm going to try to do one every Monday and then basically kind of wrap up what happened in the weekend, maybe whether it's sports, news, entertainment, just kind of whatever I feel like I want to give my two cents on. I was going to do an audio podcast, but I feel like straight audio. I don't know. I, I'm just such a YouTube video guy. I feel like it would be weird for me not to have video. So essentially, you know, hopefully I'll keep them around 20 minutes if they go longer. It is what it is. This is just for anyone that wants to hear me ramble and my thoughts and crap like that. Um, I am going to have a Twitter handle for the show. It's at Uanti Podcast. So if you have any questions, any comments about stuff I said, any uh, you know funny stuff or tweets, memes, whatever, send it to Uanti Podcast, and um, I'll try to interact on there as well as my normal Twitter. But it'll just be a good place for if you watch the specific show and a good place just to find you know when a show gets posted and stuff like that. If I want to do it more often, maybe I will. We'll see. Um, so I guess let's just get into the the first topic. Obviously, uh, on the weekend, the Masters, uh, a, a stunning turn of events. It, 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 the tournament was over. It was, I think people literally would started tuning out. No one could compete. There was no scoring. We're like, no one's going to catch Spieth. Uh, Dustin Johnson couldn't hit putts. Just, it, it, it wasn't happening. The only way that someone else was going to win it if Spieth is if, if Spieth blew it, and he did. Um, and even, and here's the thing, going into the mass, oh wow, a lot of hand motion, a lot of hand motion. I've got to keep my hands down. I'm going to do hand motions under the table because it's, wow, there was a lot of hand motion there in that last two minutes and 26 seconds. Uh, so the thing with Spieth is going into the Masters, everyone was like, oh, a lot of hat adjusting too. I'm, i got to get used to this. Uh, that's why I think the audio version would be better because you wouldn't see my hands and my hat a lot of touching going on. I, I see. That's why maybe I will do audio just so because uh, I, I move too much. I'm, I'm an animated talker. Okay. Um, no. So going into the Masters, I was like, I, I didn't like Spieth to win because Spieth hasn't really been playing that great all year. He has one tournament win. He, you know, he's been playing good, obviously, but he hasn't like he hasn't been the same Spieth as last year. There's a little bit of a hangover. So going in, I didn't love him to begin with. I I I put my money on. Um, Hideki Matsuyama, and I actually thought Jason Day, be, it, Jason Day, because he was so hot uh, coming in, I thought he was going to have a really good chance. But what, whatever, Spieth, Spieth got hot, got hot, started playing well. It, however, on Saturday, on what seventeen he bogeyed, eighteen he double bogeyed to go into Sunday. So he, there were signs that he was slowly, you know, like the little thread was kind of coming off, and and it all just kind of imploded when he went, you know, bogey, bogey quad bogey and and that was it when he put the second one in the water it was completely it was that was that was the end the masters was over everyone knew it and it was shocking like i i it, it, i i felt i felt sick for him and i know yeah everyone's like oh he's 22 he'll be back yeah absolutely he he'll be golfing for the next 25 years and he'll be fine right but like I, as a competitor, you know, you know when like you you're like, you know when you just you you're like I, he won like he, I think in his own head he was he knew he was gonna win too, and all of a sudden I, you could literally looked white as a ghost. He's like, oh my god, oh my god, I I how did this happen? And and I I think the most painful thing of all is when he had to put the uh, green jacket on Willet in the, in the clubhouse and. He like was falling over, <laughs> just like literally, like he 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 had to uh, he had to have puked somewhere. He had to just been like, I'm so sick, I I gotta puke, because he he just looked lifeless and, and and totally understandable. Like I, 
if I was him on that, when I hit it in the water, I just would have gone, jumped in the water, and probably just drowned myself. That's like, dude, that's the only option. Like, how do you, like, that's so brutal. You had to put the jacket on him and then stand there just like, you just like, like, I'm surprised he didn't just faint. Um, so, I, I don't know. I, I feel bad for the guy. And, and here's the thing is, he got, a, people were hammering on him. It's so funny how people love to root against, like, the champion or the best. Um, I, you know, at times I do, but at, at times I really like seeing great teams win. Um, you know, right now I'm seeing a lot of hate against Golden State, the Golden State Warriors, because they're so nasty. Like, between the Spurs-Golden State game the other night, so much Golden State hate. Everyone wants the champ, the best team to lose. And I'm not that way. And I might be a little spoiled because I'm a Pats fan. So I'm used to always being the champion. Uh, so I, 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 I appreciate great teams. Like I like, you know, the Spurs, a team that's just been so good for so long. So, so what I'm trying to get at is, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna segue to the the Jordan cry face. This is gonna be the majority of this episode. The first podcast is, you know, have we gone? too far with the Jordan cry face the the obvious answer is yes I mean it, it got old it, it got old really fast however it was still capable of being funny and, and here's what I'm, I'm going to explain if you don't know the Jordan cry face is uh, essentially you take Jordan crying from his Hall of Fame speech you take the head and you put it on someone who just lost or failed I don't even know who got the Jordan cry face first, but it kind of caught on in, in the Jordan cry face is basically a symbol for, haha, you lost or you fucked up. Um, I think it's funny the people that are outraged, like, if only people knew how, like, all the old guys are like, if people knew how good Michael Jordan is, they would never disgrace him like this. I just want to be like, dude, it has nothing to do with Michael Jordan's career being good, being bad. Like, you've, you've missed the joke. Bye. Um, so... I think if you use it at the appropriate times, it can still be funny. The, the, the problem is with social media, people want to be first with everything, first with everything. So, so people will queue up a Jordan cry face before, let's just say, all right, let's just say uh, Pat's Broncos, right, at AFC Championship game. Before the game even started, you know, some, you know, internet troll or whoever, you know, already, already was like, all right, I'm going to have the Brady cry face. I'm going to have the Peyton cry face. Whoever loses, I'm tweeting this out first. So they're so premeditated that it's not funny when you do like just a generic one. Like even like putting one on Brady, like let's say that someone put one on his face, which they obviously did after that game. It's like, oh, damn, the greatest quarterback of, of all time lost in a really close game where he just missed a two-point conversion to tie to, like, go to overtime. And it would have been tied if his kicker didn't miss, you know, a PAT. Mini Pats rant there. But, like, it, it's hard to put one on Brady because it's like, he's our, you know, he's, our, he's already the best. So the thing with the Jordan cry face is it should be, I think it should be used in a, and I hate to use this term, epic fail situation. So let's just say, like, Mark Sanchez butt fumble. Like, that's something where you're like, oh, shit. Like, you looked like a complete idiot. Like, if you put it on Mark Sanchez's head, it makes more funny there. And I think pe when um, people do Jordan cry faces in real time, it's funnier. Uh, for instance, in the Vikings playoff game, when Blair Walsh missed the field goal, I saw one where the ball was Jordan's face. That was like a real time. Someone had to think of it on the fly. You couldn't have prepared that one. So I think if it's used in the right circumstance, it's funny. I think people are so quick to use it that it's like, it's just easy. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like a knock-knock joke. It's like, all right, like, good one, buddy. You, you put a Jordan cry face on someone who just lost a game. It doesn't make sense. Losing a game, you should automatically get the Jordan cry face. You know what I mean? Like when the, La when the Lakers beat Golden State, the amount of Jordan cry faces I saw in the Warriors players, and I get it, like the Lakers suck and they lost to Golden State, but I was like, talking. They have like it was like their fourth loss, their fifth loss. They're they're still on pace to be the greatest team in NBA history and the best team I've ever seen. It's hard to like knock them and put a Jordan cry face on. They didn't really fuck up that bad. It's so to me, going forward. The only time, and we all have to make a conscious effort, the only time you should be using a Jordan cry face is on like a, a, a big time blunder, like a big time fuck up or big time blunder, something where something really bad went wrong, you know? Um, I think you have to deserve, the, the, the Jordan cry face should be like a badge of honor. You, you have to 
deserve that and earn it. So um, let's let's cool it with the Jordan Fry face. Uh, in segueing, se segueing, se segue, S segue, segue. Is that right, or is that what you ride? Segway, yeah, segway is what you ride and also a transition into my next topic. The Golden State Warriors are playing tomorrow night to go for the greatest record in NBA history. I think, and also that's the uh, same night as Kobe's uh, last game uh, at the Staples Center. My buddy uh, Rick is going. <laughs> so it's going to be, so that's going to be an active night on Twitter be between Golden State, whether they win or lose, and then Kobe's last game. Uh, I, I personally want to see Golden State get the record just because, I don't know, when things happen that, like, I, I never in a trillion years thought the Bulls' record would ever be broken. Like, I'd go and, like, just look at their record and their schedule and just seeing it. 72-10 and 10 in, in the NBA, I'm like, that's fucking impossible. Golden State only have if they finish the season with nine losses. As far as I'm concerned, that's 82 and 0. Like that's like oh, that's like a perfect season in the NFL. Like you, it doesn't happen. You don't do that. So like I am one of those guys who likes to see wit. I guess you can call it witness great witness greatness. You know, as as a sports fan, and I have no you know I'm a, I'm a Celtics fan. So them being in the West, is, there's no rival or anything. Celtics did beat them in Golden State, gave them the first home loss uh, of the year, uh, and I, I do. You think the Celtics are gonna uh, make a, a good run in the playoffs? But I, I, I want to see Ste like watching Steph Curry is just like I've never I've never seen anything like it. You know what I mean? Um, back the you know around the '95 Bulls, I was geez, I was born in '84, so I was 11. I didn't have an actual functioning brain. I still don't, but um, so I, I I don't think I could truly appreciate the Bulls as a full adult. I was 11. So, so being older now and, and witnessing this, you know, every single night and seeing uh, the, the the shot Steph Steph hits, it's just it's it's truly special. And now here's the big question, and this is something I'd love to hear from you guys, for some of the sports guys, is if if they get the best record in NBA history and then don't win the NBA Finals. What's your thought on that? To me, it, it does negate the record. It does, like I'll look at the Bull, seventy-two and ten Bulls plus a championship as better than Golden State's best record with no championship. And I actually think there's Golden State's been teetering a little bit. They've been teetering, you know, uh, losing a couple at home, and yeah, maybe it's just kind of like the you know the season kind of wearing down on them. But I hope for their sake, I hope. Ooh, I I I kind of feel like the Spurs will beat them in seven in the Western Conference Finals, but God forbid if they don't make it in the you can't finish with the best record in the NBA, in the NBA history and not make the finals. If that happens, can't can't have it. Can't have it. You have to at least get there. Kind of like the Pats. Pats won six, eight, 16 and 0. At least they got to the Super Bowl. Yeah, they lost the Super Bowl. But if you go 16 and 0, then lose like in your first playoff game, like you're you're a fucking idiot. Get to the, you know what I mean? You gotta get to the finals. So I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Send me some tweets uh, at Yoanti Podcast. Um, let me know uh, if you guys would prefer audio or do you want to see me fidget around for uh, 15 minutes. Uh, I can do just audio, but I think I'm going to try video on uh, this channel. And I was going to do like SoundCloud or iTunes, but I'm just I'm, – I'm, I'm a YouTube guy. It's everything, I just like to do – it's easier for me to do it through YouTube. Um, but if you have any suggestions or anything like that, I'm, I'm open. Uh, I'd like to have some guests on here. The only the hard part is is like I can't – do it live because live video feed sucks. I'll have to like Skype them in, but I want to try to get uh, some, you know, some of my friends on, maybe even like my, you know, family members or something like that. Try to try to mix it up a little bit uh, as far as the content I put out there. Um, I'm gonna mainly, like I said, keep it more entertainment, social media, what's going on in the world driven rather than sneakers. You know, if sneakers is gonna be on my sneaker channel. This is just gonna be the Oanti podcast where I talk about. Uh, whatever I feel like. Um, so I think that's pretty much uh, all I have to uh, say right now. As you can see, I've got my mail section over there, so now you know where I keep my mail. I've got a plover right there. Pretty sure it's a plover. I mean, pretty proud of myself that I knew what a plover is, but pretty sure it's a plover. Um, but yeah, 
uh, that's that's the first ever Yoanti podcast. I hope they get better. I hope that I can uh, entertain, and I'm going to try to do them every Monday. That way, I don't overwhelm myself. If I can get one up a week, I think that'd be pretty good. Uh, and like I said, I want to try to have some interaction with you guys. So make sure you tweet to me, and if you see any funny stories or topics you want to hear me talk about, send them over, and I'll try to incorporate them. And I'll try to maybe do more segments too. Like maybe I'll do like a uh, you know, a list of five to seven topics um, I want to touch on, and I think I think twenty minutes is pretty good um, for for a podcast. Um, you know, some days may be longer, some days may be shorter, but I think uh, this is good for now. And as always, thank you for. I, I want it to be more of a casual setting too, because when I sometimes when I make like videos like with the full camera and I'm trying to make them quick, there's not as much personality and they're a little too structured and too straightforward. I don't want to come off as like a newscaster. I want to be like, hey guys, it's your auntie and here's the shoe and here's this. Da, 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 da. Like I want to, I, I, I like, I'd rather, I want to try to give off a more real feel and authentic, you know, vibe. And I think these, I'll be able to do that, express my opinion a little more, say whatever the hell I want. That's my favorite thing about YouTube and and all this is just being able to turn on a camera and post a video out to the whole world for anyone to watch. So um, we'll, hopefully I'll get better. And uh, you know, Auntie Podcast, episode one in the books. Peace.